Hello, in this video I'm going to introduce the load weighing module for the Dredgemaster backhoe program. Currently we have a top down view and a side view, which is the normal screen configuration in the backhoe. So firstly I'm going to enable the load weighing module. So to do this I go to setup, setup load weighing, settings and select load weighing enabled. When I do this you'll see some new symbols appear on the top down view and the side view. On the top down view we have a yellow outline which represents a loading area. This is where the operator would pick up uh, stones or weights to be placed. If I slew from the loading area out, as we pass from the loading area, the weighing system now changes to weighing. If I go back into the loading area, this now changes to loading. So the loading area is merely an area defined so that the system knows when to start weighing, that is when we move outside of the loading area. You can have multiple loading areas depending on where you're picking the stones up and the quick link buttons at the top here let you flick between two different loading areas depending on whether if you're loading from the left hand side or the right starboard hand side. On the side view we have some yellow circles. These yellow circles are waypoints. You must have the end of the stick within one within these yellow circles in order for the weighing system to start weighing. So the operator would pick up a stick from the loading area and then he would slew round and the system will start weighing. It will stay weighing until we put the stick inside one of these yellow areas. So I'll do that now. This thing will now weigh and we have weighed a rock at 621 kilograms. If we then slew back into the loading area, you'll see that the weight is reset. We go back to loading and we can now pick up another rock, slew round and the weighing will start and then complete because the end of the stick was inside these yellow circles. If I move the stick outside of the yellow circles, slew into the loading, uh, pick up a rock and then come back out of the loading, the weighing is waiting to weigh but it can't weigh until we're, the end of the stick is in one of these yellow circles. If I lower the boom as if I was going to place the rock, you'll see as we start approaching the water level we start getting a warning to say wait for weighing. That's because the system hasn't weighed the rock that we currently are holding yet. And this is to remind the operator that he needs to bring the stick into one of these yellow circles and then weighing can then occur. Once weighing has occurred, we can then place the rock. I'll just quickly do that here. And when this happens, you'll notice a small little dot has been placed. If I click on this, it will tell me the time and the weight and the position at which this stone is placed. So over time, a lot of these yellow dots or orange dots will appear over the screen where the operator has dropped rocks that have been weighed. So once again, if we go into the slew, the loading area, and if I come back round, you can say I have a warning because I'm very close to the sea level here and I should be weighing, so I lift the boom up into a yellow circle. We have a weight now and then as an operator I would then drop the weight onto the seabed. And as you can see we have another dot here for that weight. So from an operator's point of view they need to slew round, pick a rock up, as long as the end of the stick is within one of these calibration points they can continue to slew. The important thing is not to change the boom and stick angle, but they can still slew and the weighing will occur. So let's have a look at uh, the settings uh, in a bit more detail for the load weighing. So the first thing we need to do is to set up the dimensions. Now this should have been done by the installer for you, uh, but there are full details in the user guide about where to make these measurements. On the settings, we have the settings for the various uh, two load areas that we have defined with these area 1 and 2. So for load area 1, I can change this for example to 30 degrees and you'll see that it changes to 30 degrees. 0 degrees is out the back here, 90 degrees would be to the right, minus 90 would be to the left and 180 and minus 180 are at the back. 
So if I use load angles 2, I can change this to minus 150, and it will reduce the area. In that area, this will change so that you are loading when you are not in the yellow area, and if you are in the loading area, you are placing material. So this uh, version is when you're dredging. So in this area I'm dredging, I'm picking up material from the seabed, lifting it up, and then when I slew into this, what is now an unloading area, um, the weight of the, the bucket probably will be weighed before it's then released into the barge. But we'll leave that as normal loading area for the time being. The weighing duration. So as I slew in and out of the loading area, the weighing operation will start. And the weighing operation, as long as the stick is within one of these yellow circles, will continue for one and a half seconds with multiple weights being taken and the average weight then being calculated. If the weight within changes within those one and a half seconds by 50 kilograms, and this may be because the operator moves the boom or the stick, uh, then the timer will reset back to zero and another further one and a half seconds would need to occur before the final weight is recorded. This is to ensure that the weighing of the weight is recorded accurately. The warning that was appeared at the bottom of the screen can be disabled by unchecking the show warning if weighing not completed. And the link to action is something that the foreshore support or installer will set up for you, which will link the weighing to any of the buttons in the dredge master software. The load weighing enabled will turn off the weighing, so if you are doing some operations where you don't need to weigh the rocks, then you can turn the load weighing off. Okay, so the next part of the load weighing system is the calibration circles. So in order to set up calibration, we must first go into calibration mode. And the side view changes to uh, this big red block appears, and there are three buttons um, appear at the top here. So first of all, let's clear all of the existing calibration points. So I click clear all, it asks me am I sure, I say yes. Now all of the calibration points have disappeared. So the calibration points are area points where you have measured the weight of the boom, the stick, and the tool attached to the stick and zeroed off the pressure in the boom piston. So basically, you need to move the machine around when there are no weights in the machine so that we can calibrate the boom pressure. So to do that, you simply click Add Calibration Point and move the boom and stick a little bit and add another calibration point. And we must do this without anything in the grab because we are measuring the weight of the boom stick and the tool without any other weights. So we can calibrate how much extra weight we add when we lift a rock. You'll notice that this add calibration point is greyed out as we move. That's because we need to wait for the pressure in the boom piston to settle. And this can take a couple of seconds. So after we move, the button is greyed out. So the idea is you set up yellow circles here for the operator to then reposition himself back to when he's wanting to weigh. So obviously the more you add, the easier it's going to be for the operator to get to the stick point in a yellow circle. It's fine to add multiple circles in the same position. In fact, that will give you a more accurate result because the software will take an average of all of the calibration readings. This red block is to define an area where you are not allowed to add any calibration points. So if I move into this red block you'll see that the add calibration point never becomes enabled. And that's because at this area close to the machine the weighing system is not accurate enough. In fact the most accurate positions for weighing will be when you are fully reached out. However, generally the machine cannot pick up a heavier load in this position. So just beyond the red point is a good compromise. If I add a calibration point 
and as I click the add calibration point I accidentally move the digger or something happens to change the pressure in the, the piston uh, so that we get a strange reading you can clear just a single calibration point by clicking clear position this will remove the calibration point at the end of the stick position so if I click clear position yes you'll see it's removed only the calibration point where the stick was so once you have a number of uh, calibration points and it's recommended to make sure the machine has been running for five to ten minutes before you do calibration and that as before you add a calibration point you move the machine about a little bit add a calibration point and then move the boom up and down coming from various different directions back to the same point and then add a calibration point and once you're happy that you have a good number of calibration points such that it will be easy for the driver to return to this point with a rock when he's ready to weigh. You can then come out of calibration mode and then slew into the loading area, pick up a rock then come back to within one of those circles and you can see how easy it is now that I have a good number of circles and as I slew round the system will start weighing for me um, we have a weight here of 1.4 tons and then the operator can then place the rock down on the seabed and then go and pick up another rock you'll see that we have these points and these points are added to the current job file which currently is called weighing job if I want to report on these positions I can of course just click on each position and it will show me the weight and the time and the position but I can also create a text file report. So if I right click on weighing job and click job report, I can then choose a file to write to. I select a date range and click OK. And the job report will be created for me. The contents of that file can then be loaded into Excel, for example, for your own reports. Once you've finished weighing, set up, set up load weighing, settings, and turn off load weighing. And that's a quick overview of the load weighing module.